Here is the official start list. So we'll see moving through these under 20 women. Traditionally very strong for the British team this event, but they only won the gold medal on count back. Keep your eye out for Ingeborg Oskard there for Norway. She's the European under 20, 1500 metre champion, the Irish team there. They'll be looking to emulate their teammates. France always so strong in this event and there are that British team keep your eye out for Megan Keith we've always picked up medals uh, for Great Britain in this event and I think Megan Keith could be the person to do that for Great Britain today and Valentina Rossamilia for me she's 800 meter runner but she's had a great cross-country season so far I'll be excited to see how she goes and the Spanish team there as well they've got a load of European under 20 medals and the Danish team can they be inspired by that gold and bronze in the junior race Absolutely, and follow the path ploughed by Anna Emily Muller, who will be seen coming up in the senior race later on. But this is again, once again, a loaded race. 99 athletes will be going to the start. It's a pity one more couldn't enter. But we did not expect in the under 20 men's race that Christensen would do what he did to the field. Can someone else step up and rise above and announce themselves as a potential future and indeed current star of European distance running? Quiet hush for the start as we count down last nervous moments for these young women this would be an event most of them have targeted ever since those European outdoor track championships in July in Tallinn Estonia the last five months everything will have been funneled towards this race and over the next 14 minutes it's time to show the fruits of all their toil we said it's going to be a fast and vicious run to that first corner but that's the beauty of cross country it challenges you in every which way and for these women probably slightly less so than the under 20 men it's going to challenge their speed and indeed their ability to engage elbows at the first turn this is the wonder of cross country that is a physical a mental battle and at times an emotional struggle So the well, team sort of looked at this course yesterday. Where are they on the start line? How is that going to affect their tactics into this first corner? As we've said before, this short lap, it has a really sharp left-hand turn in just about 50 metres, and you've got to funnel that field through that. Uh, there could well be drama, and you can see the Dutch team there starting strong on the left of your screen. They're going to have to sweep across the field, so perhaps they've got to start even faster to try and get a good line. They come up a gentle rise. You can see Oscar there from Norway towards the four. Buckley of Ireland and Varga as well, the young Hung Hungarian athlete. She is just about in the lead through that corner. Let's hope everybody navigates it safely. Yeah, so far so good on that front. I think everyone's been quite cautious. All these athletes were out on the course yesterday, walking it, jogging it, sprinting down that home straight, doing a few strides. They've got used to this first turn and all of them will have been, I'm sure the team managers will have been warning them, be very careful because you do not want your whole race to go down this one he had the first bend but as you see some of the Irish are already up there Jane Buckley and Laura Mooney Laura Rosser but the big guns that we think are going to be contending for the medals Greta Varga Ingeborg Osgard Sophia Thuggerson are also taking their positions towards the front and in a race of four kilometers you certainly do not want to hang around you do not want to be sitting back in 20th position given what we saw in the men's race this could go hard at any point and if you're not on that move it could be game over very quickly in the battle for individual medals we talked about athletes that do have experience at this level, given the, the year that we've had off of the European cross country. We said Greta Varga there, she has got experience. She was seventh in Lisbon, um, perhaps using that experience there to get herself out of trouble at the front of the race. Megan Keith's done well to navigate that pack and get herself to the lead as well. But I think you don't want to leave, cross, you never want to leave cross country to a sprint finish, but when you've only got four kilometers to sort the of field out, uh, you have to go hard early if you perhaps don't trust in your sprint finish. Uh, Greta Varga for me is a steeplechaser. Uh, she might not fancy being in a sprint finish with someone like Ingeborg Ostergaard, who's the European 1500 meter champion. Uh, so she might keep her foot on the pedal as they come towards the end of this first kilometer lap and they will then embark on two 1500 meter laps. It's going to be fast and furious, and Varga is churning it out at the moment. The steeplechaser, as you said, well used to having her rhythm disrupted. A terrifying event that is the steeplechase, but this will feel like a breeze with the flat running. She is a 9.50 steeplechaser. She's 16.28 for 5K, but she's also a good 1,500-meter runner at 4.16, as you said, seventh two years ago at the age of just 15, and silver at the European Under-20 Championships in the steeplechase. But 
Osgard, you'd have to say with that victory in the Nordic under 20 cross country champs, you'd have to say she's going to be a formidable athlete to take down here. And like I said, with that European under 20 title at 1500 meters, she will have the speed to handle what comes at her. But the question is, can she be there around that final turn and for the last 150 meters to utilize it? Because cross country above all is a test of strength. And we see the big cheer there for Laura Mooney who moves up the Irish, Irish woman. She didn't run the Irish nationals. She was over at, at Providence College and she was running well on the NCAA circuit. She was 60th in the NCAA championships, coached by Ray Tracy there, brother of John Tracy, the former world cross-country champion. And she is the Irish under-20 record holder at 5,000 metres and 10,000 metres. She's run 16-19. She was sixth at the European under-20 championships on the track at 5,000 metres. She will certainly be Ireland's best hope at getting amongst the medals here, but it's a big ask. And we see the Irish are packing well again. Looks like the Germans are packing very well there with three in the top five or six six right to the four and I'm sure with Constance Cluster helping to come later in the day they'll be keen to get one female medal on the board at least here that, like uh, interesting team tactics there from Germany we maybe didn't see them so much in that first kilometer but as we move towards this first longer lap they are right there and keep your eye on Maria nope wrong name Emma Heckel uh, she was got a bronze medal at the European Championships in the summer but she came 18th at the NCA cross country uh, she's at the University of New Mexico and that's a serious run to come 18th in the NCA cross country so keep your eye there um, on the German athlete Emma Heckel but I think I feel like they're going to sort themselves out on this lap it's a bit simpler there's a few less turns and you can see Megan Keith there at the front maybe she's going to be the one to push the pace on next it looks like it. there are a lot of big athletes expressing in big contenders, as you say, expressing their interest here at the front on this second lap. This is where a lot is going to be decided, and I'm sure they won't be as tightly bunched when they come through the finish line next time with just 1,500 metres to run. This is fast and furious from the start, and all the big contenders are in that big pack at the moment, who we thought on paper uh, would feature. As we said there, the Germans holding that early lead, just 20 points. They're in that gold medal position at the moment from Spain and then from Ireland in bronze medal position. Uh, but that, as we saw in the men's race, it can get really tight on those team scores. But that's great first few kilometres from the German team. Yeah, very wise, I think, running as well. And like you said, it was, probably was an instruction from the team manager that, look, it is going to be crazy to that first bend. The first 400, the first four 600, 600 is always a little crazy at this level, but you don't need to go crazy four kilometers it's a wide course as you can see there is plenty room to pass and I think the Germans executed the plan where they said right after 600 meters let's get working and once we come through that first kilometer let's be where it needs to be I know knowing some of the Irish managers at one point uh, or involved with the Irish team in recent years their advice to some of the athletes was to be in the position you want to finish in after 800 meters not at the first bend because obviously things can get a little crazy that first 200 and I think that is generally sensible advice for cross country then these head-on shots, it still looks like a very large group, but from the side there, you can see it's slightly stringing out, two or three across. Uh, so hopefully these athletes will be able to run a bit more relaxed and, and see the course. You can see Sophia Thorgensen there of Denmark. She's swung wide, maybe wanting to get a bit of a better look at her footing or move further up the field. But Megan Keith, for me, she's been making a concerted move at the lead there for, for the last two minutes or so um, could she be try trying to do a Christensen there and, and push from the front but she's certainly got more company than the Dane had in the under 20 men's race yeah this I think is not going to be one uh, race of individual brilliance and a solo effort this is probably going to come down a lot closer but it looks like two athletes are starting to separate and as you mentioned Megan Keith is applying the pressure she is turning the screw up front the, she won, of course, that British under-20 trial in Liverpool recently, and she is coming in in flying form. And I think historically, as we know, 16 of the last 20 team goals in this event have gone to Britain. If you're the best under-20 in Britain, chances are you're going to be one of the best under-20s in Europe, and that is very much proving the case here as we come through. With about 2K to run for Megan Keith, she has got them all hurting in behind, but Anna Heckel and Greta Varga are going nowhere. They are very much sticking to her slipstream here and as you mentioned Anna Heckel with that outstanding run at the NCAA cross country it's actually a course that's aside from being a lot softer underfoot than in Florida I'm sure of course you know well in a, a, a yeah, that, well, I did go to Florida State University that hosted that NCAA championships. And I'll agree with you, when I was walking it yesterday, I thought this isn't dissimilar. 
uh, is, is not very many hills. You've got the wooded section. There's a few bends and this finish as well. A slight rise and then a 150, 200 metre finishing straight isn't dissimilar to that MCA championships. But you see Megan Keith really getting into her running. They've got just 1,500 metres to go, maybe a mile to go now. Uh, that won't mean, yeah, that will be nice for these athletes. They'll be used to doing reps over that distance and mentally rehearsing this. But Megan Keith in the lead uh, with just one lap to go. But she has got heckle of Germany for company uh, and a big pack still gathered behind. Yeah, certainly no muddy corners on that Florida course, but Anna Heckel seems to be handling them very well. And with one lap to run, Anna Heckel has played a patient game here. She moves to the front. Is this the preordained plan from Anna Heckel? Sit in for the first kilometre, get near the front, and then do the damage on the last 1,500 metres because Anna Heckel has taken over at the front from Megan Keith. But it's not a decisive advantage, and all the big contenders, Ingeborg Oscard has quietly creeped into the race there she's been sitting in the pack all along and she is now up to fourth position running alongside uh, that's Sophia Thuggerson of Denmark they're in contention but the medal race is all to be played out here over this final 1500 meters and we'll check in on those team scores and Thorgensen and Oscar there, they really kept the powder dry. They've had a quiet race, but as we move towards the business, business end of it in this last lap, uh, they have moved forward, but they need to, be, need to be sure that they don't lose contact here. As Emma Heckel's putting in a big move. You can see Monin and um, Thorgensen and Oscar there, they've got to try and hold on to that first and second positions, else that gold and silver will be gone down the field. Oscar is leading the charge in third, but Emma Heckel it looks like she looks even fresher slightly at this stage than anyone else in the field and this, this is a big move on that downhill run this long lap they're probably only about 1200 meters from the finish now and as you said 1200 and k's they'll be reps they're used to doing so many times in preparation for this and that's what they'll be saying in their head it's only three minutes it's only four minutes suffer now and live the rest of your life as a champion as the cliched saying goes but emma heckel is applying the pressure up front but this could come down hannah to the test of who's got the best 1500 meter speed and we know there are some big hitters in the pack front. i think oscar for me she's looking good she's slowly working her way back up to those up those uh, first two and if she's in contention in the last 400 500 meters i'd expect to see that 1500 meter speed uh, come to the fore but the team competition as well you see germany still in the lead with 20 points from spain with 28 great britain and northern ireland with 42 so germany you can see that's their third counter gone through the screen already can they hold on to that that team gold medal yeah, and Oscar, we mentioned her 1500 meter credentials. She's a 412 athlete there in third in the Norwegian singlet. She's a 203 800 meter runner. So at junior level, she has the wheels to close here. And uh, we struggled to see her out of the medals. And she may well have the speed indeed to take gold. Maria Arnadillo there of Spain. She got third in that under 20, 1500 meters, just making her way around that corner as well. So she'll be very familiar with competing with Ingeborg Oscard. Um, and these 1500 meter runners, they're going to be happy now. They're getting near the end. They're thinking, this is my territory now. If I can just hold on for another minute or so, uh, and then I can unleash a sprint finish. But Megan Keith does not want that to happen. Megan Keith is not interested in a sprint finish. She wants this to go hard now. They've got, what do we think? 800 meters to go? Yeah, maybe even less, maybe even 600. And Megan Keith, if you're going to break, these 1500 meter athletes this is the part of the course you're going to have to do it it's the muddiest section of the course the lowest part of the course that's where the water develops normally at this time of year that is absolute slop down there but they put some sand down so it's not as bad as usual but there's a she's going to swing a right hand turn or left hand turn here 90 degrees and then it's the toughest little hill on the course if you're going to break those speedsters in behind now is the time for Emma Heckel and Megan Keith to do it and I think they're doing it because we see there Miria Arnadio the 412 1500 meter runner and Ingeborg Oscar and another 412 1500 meter runner and indeed Finland's Ilona Monanen they're all struggling to maintain contact it's the endurance athletes the true endurance athletes Megan Keith and Emma Heckel here are putting them all under the cash here and it looks like Keith it may just be headed for gold I love that response there from Emma Heckel, though. She was in the lead. Megan Keith came past. She had another go. Emma Heckel wanted to get back into the lead, but Megan Keith had saved an extra gear. She'd saved a bit of energy. This is a big move off Megan Keith. Could this be her final move of the race? 
but the others, are, they've got a group behind. They're going to work together. At this camera angle, it's hard to tell, but I think Megan Keith could be running away with this gold medal. And the Germans are packing very well there. Four athletes in the top eight. They're definitely headed for team gold. The Germans, the Brits, and the Spaniards are packing well. But we'll concentrate on the individual race for the moment because they're coming up to the final turn here. And Megan Keith has about a 10 meter advantage over Emma Heckel. It is Ingeborg Oskard and Ilona Moninen, two of the European under 20 champions at 1500 meters and 3000 meters, are in the battle for bronze and possibly silver at the moment. But can anyone reel in Emma Keith at the moment? She heads up. This is all in uphill running if it looks like they're running a little bit slower it's because they are this is uphill into the wind and they're going to swing this left hand turn and Megan Keith is going to have 150 painful long meters between herself and a possible European under 20 title and Megan Keith has timed her run to perfection Great Britain so much tradition in this event and we look set to have another British champion to join the likes of Harriet Knowles-Jones Amelia Goretzka Stephanie Twell Charlotte Perdue such history in this event for Great Britain and Megan Keith she has timed this run to perfection she had a go at dropping the field in that second lap bided her time and she has unleashed a fantastic second half in this lap Emma Heckle tried to challenge her but it's Emma Huckle going to come under pressure from the rest of the field but Megan Keith striding away for victory in this Spa European Cross Country Championships to take the under 20 women's title. Megan Keith of Great Britain holds on to the victory. Fantastic finish there from Oscar of Norway using a 1500 meter speed to get ahead of Emma Heckel from Germany. We see fourth place there for Germany as well packing fantastically well strong finish there from the second Spanish counter. But it's surely a record low score there for Germany. Well, I think there is one. There was one race probably 12 years ago where the Brits went. It was a top four. One through six in Belgium. So that will be the record. Germany won't have beaten that, but fantastic running from Germany. Anyway, oh. we see a heartbreaking athlete who's just fallen short. Just crawl across that finish if you have to. There we go. It's one of the French athletes. And I think it was one of her teammates, is it, who fell across with her and lost a few places there with that but thankfully if you're going to fall that's a good place to fall um, what a performance though from Germany that was an outstanding effort for the team race and indeed Megan Keith timed it all to absolute perfection well she got a team gold with the British team in Lisbon Megan Keith but she's got her individual gold here today we said it's such a short race just 13 14 minutes you've got to hold your nerve and judge your effort right and that's exactly what Megan Keith did have a look back at that under 20 they're now official these results megan keith of britain 1341 ingeborg oscar that 1500 meter speed used to great effect to kick to silver and it was emma heckel of germany with the bronze sophia thuggerson there faded out quite a bit and <laughs> sorry to interrupt but you will have heard the cheer in the background you know what that means ireland is a top the medal podium in the under 23 men's team results 21 points they take victory great britain and northern ireland in second on 24 and it is france in third on 36.